Good evening to championship weekend, and it's the final championship here on the campus of Benton High School in the Benton Athletic Complex. And well, the host team gets the nightcap as the Lady Panthers are going to take on Greene County Tech in the 5A state championship game. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Bobby Swafford alongside Eric King. And this is going to be a good one with probably the softball game that most people had circled as the best team, at least as far as Benton. But Greene County Tech probably shouldn't be overlooked too much. No, definitely not. You know, they. They played earlier in the year, and it was a three to nothing ball game. So, you know, from speaking with uh, samples a little bit before the ball game, the leadoff batter here, the first thing she said is, "We want revenge," and they're excited. So, uh, this will be a great game tonight. Eleven straight victories for Green County Tech since that loss on April the 14th to Benton. You mentioned the three nothing setback, the only loss that Green County Tech had to a school from the state of Arkansas. They took down Valley View twice this season. They already won a 4A championship this weekend. Of course, we'll go over the resumes a little bit more as the broadcast goes along. Abbreviated pregame because the 5A baseball game just wrapped up. Congratulations to those crew over there as Marion knocked off the defending state champion Van Buren Pointers in that contest. But we are set and ready to play. Elena Scott in a circle. Her first pitch is fouled straight back. And we are officially underway here in the 5A state softball championship game. Kylie Stokes steps in. Leading things off for the Lady Eagles. That's another thing Stokes said before the ball game. They're going to stay away from that rise ball, but try to jump on that first fastball. And I think she tried to do that right there. That one taken high. Stokes hitting 487 this year. Seven home runs, 23 RBIs, 11 doubles. And production comes from every part of this lineup for the Lady Eagles. 1-1 one, one pitch, also fouled back, so one and two. The pitching numbers for Benton, well, they're almost comical. They're so small. Uh, Elena Scott, 15 and 0 this season, a .468 ERA, 134 strikeouts, just 38 walks and 89 innings of work, only allowed 27 hits all season long. And almost got herself the first punch out of this contest, but that one deemed just a little bit low, evens up the count at two apiece. And Scott's not the only one they've got. You know, Houston, <laughs> she's got 166 strikeouts with the ERA of point five one six. That one also ruled just out of the zone. So opening batter of the contest runs the count full. So I just mentioned Scott's only walked 38 all season long. This one foul popped up. Is it going to be play made? Nope. Can't be made here in the stands. Had a chance to make a play, but he can't do it. That's why he's in the bleachers and not on the field, right? Exactly. I'm, just, I'm glad he had his hands up. I'm <laughs> glad they didn't catch the bill out of cap. Nice crowd as expected here as the host squad. And Bitten playing in the nightcap. This is championship game number 20 of the weekend of champions. That one right across the outside third and struck her out for the first out of the contest. And she put that right at the perfect place to where she couldn't get a bat on that one. She just painted uh, the right edge of that plate. Yeah, if you're Kylie Stokes, you got to be looking. You got to be aggressive on a 3 2 count. That time she just froze her and she goes down looking. That brings up Brielle Sage for Green County Tech. 379 batting average this season for Bree. 24 RBIs, 12 doubles. And the one thing that Green County Tech likes to take advantage of is their speed. They look to get base runners and they're going to put them in motion. That one misses just off the edge of the plate. Sage gets ahead in the count. You know, I was worried about the weather for today, but at least as of first pitch and here in the top of the first, things are gorgeous here in Saline County. Too bad and the wind's not just terrible. That one sprayed foul over to the right side. I think the student section from Benton's got this whole, uh, the left side of it's this whole bleacher section. Yep, the 5A baseball game was well represented as well, but of course the commute for the Benton student section, not very far. That one chopped foul off the foot of the first base coach. A kick save and a beauty. <laughs> it's impressive when you, know, you talk about Scott's uh, resume here for Benton. Uh, she told me right before the ball game she's going to UCA just to be a student. So this is going to be her last softball game. That's that says something when you're 15 and 0 
And the lost all year, Yeri under half of a run, and she gets her second strike out to start the contest. She knows exactly where she's putting that third down. For that third strike, they're going to have to go out there and get those. We haven't touched on the resume just yet of Benton, but it speaks for itself. They are 31 and 0 this year. They have won 62 consecutive games, looking to cap off their second straight perfect season. They outscored their opponents 17 to nothing in the state tournament. So two down, and then steps Ava Carter. Carter immediately fouls one back, and she's behind in the count 0-1-1. When you think about the resume for Benton, they, they weren't scheduling nobodies. They beat Nashville, who was a 4A runner-up twice. They beat Bentonville three times, who won the 6A state championship. And as we've already mentioned, they beat Green County Tech earlier this year. That just makes them better, and that puts them in the position they are right now. That one misses just off the edge of the plate. How they got here? In the state tournament, I mentioned that Benton has outscored their opponents 17-0. Mountain Home, they defeated 3-0. Whitehall, they beat 4-0. And then Van Buren in the semifinals, they beat 10-0. That one sprayed foul. Coach Reynolds got a duck out of the way. Green County Tech, though, their postseason almost as impressive. They defeated Lakeside 10 to nothing, Greenwood 7 to 3, and then Sheridan 9 to 1. But that victory over Greenwood had a little drama in it. Well, I tell you, we'll have five runs in the bottom of the six. Uh, that puts them here, and, uh, you know, they're excited. So they know they can put the bat on the ball, and right now they'll have their work cut out for them against Scott. One two pitch. That one's sent to shorts. Nice, strong throw, and gets her. Gets her girl, nice job there by Shelby Samples. And one, two, three goes Green County Tech. They're retired in order. After half an inning, we are scoreless as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. This month on Arkansas PBS. It's been the best thing that has ever happened to me. So join me as we journey through America's Hey, I'm Rick Steves. Join me dazzled by neo-Byzantine art and dine well on local cuisine. I had the highest lift in all of Europe. I'm Samantha Brown, and I'm always looking to find the destinations, the experiences, and most importantly, the people. Only on Arkansas PBS. Arkansas PBS offers all the baseball and softball games and more on demand starting next week at youtube.com forward slash Arkansas PBS. So Green County Tech goes down in order in the top of the first and the home team, the number one team in all of Arkansas, a top 10 ranked national team. The Benton Lady Panthers coming up for the first time. They're 31 in overall record. That's a good look at the starting pitcher for Green County Tech, Carly Burrow. She's 19 and two on the season, a 1.36 ERA, struck out 122, walked just 24. So she looks for the punch out. Something we'd not have to mention uh, at all, hardly uh, in his last few softball games, is this Benton team, if you look at them, they got six or seven seniors out there. And a lot of these teams that we've had uh, in the state championships have uh, been kind of, as we would say, a lot of underclassmen. We've got a, we're ready to go. Good time to talk about the umpiring crew. Glenn Prince is behind the plate. John Davis over at first base. Dan Henry has the duty over at third. So in steps Shelby Samples, and she takes strike one over the heart of the plate. Samples hitting 440 on the season in her leadoff spot. 20 singles, 16 doubles, has four home runs. On base percentage of over 500, so she knows how to set the table for this Lady Panther offense. And just right on cue, she slaps that one in the right field, beats the throw. And 
Back to first base she goes. A nice single to start things off for the Lady Panthers here in the first. You know, one thing Coach Cox said about this Ben squad is that uh, uh, they consider them the triplets. It's Sample Scott and Goodnight. And uh, Scott and Goodnight have played together ever since they've been five years old. So two seniors to play that long together, you know, uh, finishing off here with the championship uh, would be uh, pretty special for them. David Carter, the right fielder, tried to gun her down at first. And luckily, that one was backed up well. Didn't allow the runner to advance. Elena Scott now steps in, shows bunt, and that throw goes all, all the way to right field. But luckily, again, the runner does not advance. Green County Tech trying to do a little too much defensively. They need to settle down. Can't give the number one team in the state too many extra opportunities to advance. You know, throwing the ball around is probably not what uh, Coach Reynolds wanted to do. Scott. One right up the middle, could be two. Steps on the back for one, relay throw is in time. Double play. Sage steps on the bag, makes the strong throw. Spear with the nice stick. And that's what you call the 6-3 double play. Well done by this Green County Tech defense. Great job there by the junior Sage to take that ball by herself. And uh, she boys, I'll tell you what, when she stepped on that bag, she threw a rocket over there to first base. That's how you draw it up. 6-3 double play, erases the lead off. And now Alyssa Houston steps in. Immediately smokes one right back up the center. That is the hardest hit single you're going to find. Ed Bitten has their second hit, but also a base runner now with two outs. I'll tell you what, she, uh, she I didn't even say turned on that. And she just she hit that right in the middle. Didn't have time to say that she has a 392 average, and that just got raised a few points. So that brings up Riley Gilmore, the cleanup hitter. Now why Houston has 11 home runs when she hit that ball. Gilmore hitting 432 on the season, but 12 home run, excuse me, 12 doubles and 11 home runs. She falls behind the count, 0 and 1 though. As Burrow looks to get out of the first unscathed. That one fouled straight back. Now it's 0 and 2. I don't know with uh, two strikes here and no balls. I think you got a couple freebies here. You don't have to lay anything up there on the tee for. Yeah, Benton has certainly come out swinging. They have put a good swing on three. And unfortunately for Scott, one was right at the shortstop that led to the double play. I'll try to get her to chase the ladder up top, and that one's well out of the zone. Gilmore wisely lays off of it. I think we'll see this one close either, Bobby. A one two count to Gilmore. Time was called, so that pitch is not going to count. You saw the umpire raise his hand, but Burrow had already started her motion and wise to go ahead and let that one go. See the new look logo for Green County Tech. That one fouled away. Gilmore stays alive, still down one and two in the count. Sherwood put that pitch right in the same exact spot. Gilmore 17 RBIs on the season. 25 RBIs, excuse me. That one fouled away again. Hanging tough. A few times this weekend we've seen some battles up there at the plate like this where several uh, Foul balls, and I think you made mention yesterday. Anytime it goes straight behind us, that kind of looks like you're just uh, just missing it by a hair. Houston's the runner at first. Two down here in the bottom of the first. Swing and a miss. That'll do it for the inning. Two hits, but Benton can't push one across, mainly because of the double play. So through one, we are scoreless here in the 5A state championship game, and you're watching it live on the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports.
Since 1976, McCormick Equipment Rental and Sales has been equipping Arkansans for the tough jobs, construction equipment and rentals, service and sales, and a proud underwriter of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Did you know fans could see the live game stats before we do? Download the Arkansas PBS Engage app to get all the numbers during the live game. We are through one. We are scoreless. Green County Tech and Benton. Coming up for the Lady Eagles is Carly Hollis, Marley Spear, Carly Burrow. Numbers four, five, and six in the lineup. And they're going to try to solve the riddle that is Elena Scotts. You see her there in the circle for Benton. Hollis, it's 448 on the year. That one, a little bit low. She takes ball one. Hollis, 38 RBIs, 10 extra base hits. That one, chopped to the right side, and they rule it foul, it looks like. Didn't get a call from the first base umpire, but in softball, until it crosses the bag, it's actually the call of the home plate official. Well, we talked about the history here with Benton now. And it's a great softball they've had. It's a first trip for this Green County Tech squad. Looking for that first ever title. Benton looking for their first title in 364 days. Another one chopped foul. Benton, one of seven teams amongst the baseball and softball who are trying to repeat this weekend. We've seen a few of them turn the trick. See a few of them turned away. As you might expect. One and two's the count to Hollis. That one misses outside. Evens up the count two and two. One thing that Green County Tech has certainly done, even though they had two strikeouts in the first, they're making Elena Scott work for it. Well, they said they were going to battle up there, and uh, we can tell by their. Uh, runs batted in that they're going to swing the stick. Two and two. That one fouled away. Chase that one up around the shoulders. We got just enough of it to foul it away and stay alive. Coach Reynolds mentioned a little bit about the Green County Tech squad. There are three seniors that are in the starting lineup uh, also are finishing in the top 10 of their senior class. So pretty impressive with everything these young people got going on these these days. Again, fouls one away. A good battle here between Hollis and Scott. We are scoreless top of the second in the 5A State Softball Championship game. Appreciate every one of you tuning in all weekend long for these baseball and softball championship games. And so far, knock on wood, we've gotten really lucky all weekend with the weather. That one sent out to second base. Addison Davis makes the play. Easy flip to first. 4-3 in your scorebook. And one down here in the second inning. Well, Scott said, you know, she told me right before the game that, uh, uh, she's had some success there in the circle, but uh, she contributes that a lot to uh, that defense behind her. Uh, and we can tell by the last uh, two innings that uh, they play solid defense back there. And we saw a really good game yesterday, Valley View. Well, their pitcher got 19 of the final 20 batters she faced out and only had two strikeouts. So it pays to have a solid defense behind you, otherwise you wouldn't be in the state championship game. Marley Spear now up to bat for Green County Tech. 365 average, eight home runs, 31 RBIs on the season. That one misses 2 0. Hitters count here for Spear, trying to add to that season leading, team leading, eight home runs. Second on the team in RBIs. That one inside. And looks like we've got a dead ball. We're going to say that it caught the heel of the bat. Kind of the reaction there from Spear didn't really sell that she got hit by a pitch, but now she's starting to claim that the hand hurts a little bit. You know, the home plate umpire was quick to say, though, that one hit the butt of the bat. Uh, that one hit a, that hit a bone that came off her pretty hard. Yeah, you got to sell that a little faster. Exactly, that, uh, that had a little pop to it. Yep, you got, you got to make that reaction almost immediate. That one misses low. 
The home crowd thought it was a cross, but and dove a little too early. And now Elena Scott behind in the count, three and one in the circle. And she lost her. A five pitch walk there to Spear. And GCT has their first base runner. Now a little pitcher on pitcher matchup as Carly Burrow steps up to the plate. 333 season average, 23 RBIs. A game like this, you know, one or two runs makes a world of difference. So don't be surprised if we don't see some short ball here just to move her into scoring position with one out. Yep, Spear does have eight stolen bases on the season, so she could be a threat to run. Burrow, big hack there on strike one. It didn't look like no slap or bunt there for me. Uh, she yep. was uh, swinging away. A left on left matchup here. Good look at Scott. Outstanding pitcher. 15 and 0 on the season. There's the bunt you asked for. That one fouled straight back into the netting. Keep your head on a swivel. Almost got him. Tell you what, he's not far from getting hit tonight. He's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the second one within the uh, the two. Uh, first inning had one close, and then now we're in the second inning, and that was uh, pretty close as well. So Scott now quickly ahead. 0-2. Oh, Somebody's going to get injured over here, and it's yeah. not going to be by a foul ball. It's going to be by them trying to get it over the Fan, net. Yeah, fans keep trying to throw the foul ball back over, and they shouldn't do it now. And then they tried it again, and there it comes. Oh, fans are so used to throwing the ball back. You don't have to do that in state finals. You can you can actually just walk it over to the dugout. But back in our day, we'd run at the concession stand and try to get something free. It's so. Just no cone. Exactly. A little maybe a little push pop. 0 oh, 2 still the count to Burrow. That one high. 1 and 2. So if there's nobody out, maybe you consider laying down the butt, trying to move Spear into scoring position with one already down in the inning. Burrow's going to swing away, and she swings and misses. Strike three. Good little off speed pitch there by Scott. She knew that she was sitting dead right on the fastball, and she pulled a string a little bit on that one. Third strikeout already of the contest for Scott. That pushes her season total to 137. Avery Stokes now steps in. Where's number 11, 301 batting average this season. A single round tripper, 18 RBIs. That time she climbed the ladder just a touch, swings through strike one. By a reaction, she thought she might have just very, just missed it just by a hair. But uh, again, like I said, they're going to go after that fastball. That time she watches strike two go over the outer half. So Elena Scott with the one out walk is a strike away from getting out of this inning. The 0-2 pitch just got a piece of it, did Avery Stokes, and she stays alive. No beating around it here for Elena Scott. She's coming right at the number six hitter. Of this Jeep Green County Tech lineup. That time she does climb the liner, gets the fourth strike out of the frame. Two in the first, two in the second. The one out walk is stranded at first. After inning and a half, we are still scoreless as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Dedicated to helping you protect what you love. 
your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. We never gonna stop. Get your live action photos from the game at myarpbs.org forward slash photos. Grab a free download, half prints made. These are great championship keepsakes. Bottom of the second, Benton coming up. It's batters number five, six, and seven in the lineup and starts it off as Gracie Redman. Where's the all so common number of 88 in softball? 427 average on the season. Takes that one up and away. Yeah, 88 and I saw where Scott was actually a double zero. There's 46 in the Benton lineup. 0 through 9 must have been taken. That one popped up on the right side. Made plenty of room for the first baseman. And she camps under it. And Marley Spear records the first out of the inning. That's another thing Coach Reynolds said is that, hey, listen, we can't get many free ones. And you sit and mention that in the first inning is that get all you can get. And if it's a foul ball out or if it's a lazy ground ball, you got to take advantage of those. So with one down, Aubrey Goodnight steps up to the plate. 349 average for Goodnight. Seven doubles, a triple on the season. Taking just four walks, though, so she's going to be aggressive at the plate. And right on cue, she slaps one in the right. Could be a play at the plate, though, at first. Throw was off the line, so call that a single for a good night. So third hit already in this contest for Benton. What they're playing that right in the right field, but uh, it's just uh, a good throw there. Might have been, might have had her. That's the second time Carter's tried to gun down a runner at first base, and both times they've gone awry. That one ruled a hit, so third hit of the contest already for Benton. They couldn't take advantage in the first inning. We'll see what they do here in the second as Addison Davis steps into the box. 317 on the season for Davis. She takes that one high. I'd be surprised if she don't try to slap this one to the left side over here. 18 RBIs for Addison on the season. Infield is in. So they're expecting bunt and they get one and that one fouled straight back between the catcher's legs. See what they were attacking the plate. <laughs> they were coming from all directions. They were certainly charging hard from the corners. It's always the interesting play here in softball. You watch the, the two corners, they crash on and they expect if they th think a bunt's coming, they'll stand four or five feet away from the batter. Exactly. We almost saw somebody get their head taken off in that last ball game with a pulled it back and slapped it down the third baseline. This time she's going to swing away and fouls one over the third place dugout. That one rolls all the way to the, it's the football facility. There's a fence there, so I guess it goes past the fence. It's technically the football facility. Baseball, softball, and football all between a, a lob wedge of each other here at the Benton Athletic Complex. That one chopped foul. Whether you hit a nice pretty lob wedge or you blade it, they're all, it's all pretty close. Right. Usually blade or the old, the old chip. the hosel. <laughs> The old chili dip, you might have to hit a few of those. Addison Davis down 1 2 in the count. Chokes up on the bat, flips it. That one right on the chalk, but a ruled foul. Tell you See what, if you've got a good look at that one. That one looked like it really close to that left field line, but ruled a foul ball. Just left of it. That's a really good shot of it there. See the. The brown, or the, excuse me, the black rubber pellets fly. Doesn't really dictate whether it's fair or foul, but you can see the white beyond the ball. So we'll do the one two pitch again. That one well short. Evens up the count at two and two. You know what? That would have been a textbook just laying it right over the third. Yeah. They say it. I'm, a, I'm not sure that we wouldn't get the runner to third. So Addison Davis steps in. Two and two the count runner on first for the Lady Panthers. That one chopped back up the middle. 
The pitcher goes to first. Burrow with a nice throw there gets the outs. And two down in the inning, but Goodnight does advance to second. That's a good job by Burrows just getting that out to get her to the number two out of that inning and uh, not trying to force anything because right now all they need is one to uh, get back in there and swing the sticks. Yeah, good job by Davis also putting the ball in play, moving the runner into scoring position. And Lydia Bethard steps up to the plate with two out here in the bottom of the second. Bethard's another strong average hitting 314 with that one a first pitch chopper to third and strong throw by Zoe Reynolds gets the runner and just like that the inning is over so another single left on the base after two innings Benton has three hits but they haven't pushed one across the plate we're scoreless as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. Dealing things is always more fun with you around. I wish you were dead. There's more going on here than meets the eye. Put our lives in each other's hands. The lie when he jumped. This guy is our crime scene. we have been stabbed before he exited the plane. Please be careful. I we're caught in the middle of a fascist march. Enough is enough. They're coming for us, Daddy. I did what needed to be done. I know. Only on Arkansas PBS. For more than 50 years, Arkansas PBS has been a trusted resource. Our high quality programs are seen by viewers in every corner of our state, making on-air sponsorship a solid investment. Aligning your business with Arkansas PBS offers a powerful blend of community engagement, corporate philanthropy, and cause marketing. And our viewers remember and appreciate businesses that support our programs. Contact us today for more information on sponsorship opportunities. Join the baseball and softball conversation on social media with hashtag ARPBS Sports. Third, third, two, and we are scoreless. Nothing, nothing here in the 5A softball state championship game. Green County Tech and Benton. 8, 9, and 1 in the batting order coming up for GCT. It's going to be led off by Hannah Stallings. 362 average on the season. One home run, five doubles. See if she can get the first hit of the contest for the Lady Eagles. We've had a base runner, so uh, we'll start up this inning here with a nice little single. Elena Scott, though, she might have other things to say about it. She struck out four, but that one appears to hit Stallings in the face mask. And that's one way to earn your way onto the base path. And the second runner for GCT reaches. And that one right off the forehead. Dots the T. Well, I promise you, they'll take them any way they can get them right now. Yeah, she looks to be just fine. So you can have a little laugh about that. Zoe Reynolds step in, the number nine hitter for Green County Tech. Reynolds 368. Shows bunch, but pulls it back in time. What a luxury to have. A number nine hole hitter hitting 368 on the season. That'll help you flip over the lineup. Exactly, and she's just one of two sophomores that's in the starting lineup for Green County Tech. Well, the 1-0. Again, shows bunt. Pulls it back. She's up in the count now, 2-0. Can't tell if she's going to try to lay down a bunt. She's a slap hitter. Either way, she's pulled it back and got herself ahead in the count. She can definitely make contact. That 368 average tells us that, so. Lays one down to the left side of the pitcher. She can't handle it. And an infield single, and Green County Tech is in business here in the third. Probably something uncommon there for Scott not to get a glove on that one. But again, you know, right now with uh, no outs and uh, you got runners at first and second, what a way to start this uh, top of the third for Green County Tech. She just lays that butt down on arm side of the pitcher, Scott. So kind of an awkward angle to try to catch that, you know, to barehand it. And Scott kind of bobbles it and doesn't make the play in time. And now two on, nobody out. Back to the top of the lineup in Kylie Stokes. And Stokes is the one I talked to before the ball game. And she said, uh, hey, we're going to run a little bit. We're going to try to make some thing happen. And right now, I think right here is the ending to make that adjustment. She thought about a bump. That one too high. Seven home runs on the season for Kylie to go along with her 487 batting average. But she struck out looking to start the contest and her power. It looks like they're playing her in a little bit in the outfield. So we are 200 across the board here. The Benton Athletic Complex. That one 
across for a strike. 200 down the left field and right field lines respectively. 200 to dead center. Wind's not blowing like it was last night, Bobby. It was uh, played some tricks on the ball for sure. In that previous game, if you were watching the 5A baseball championship, it saw what might have been the longest home run in this park's history. See if we've got any juice in the bat tonight here on the softball side. That one butt bunt popped up and the plays made by the pitcher, but the throw hits the runner. That's going to allow a run to come home to score for Green County Tech. And that throw now gets away. But backs it up and they gun down the runner at the plate. Great job defensively by Benton. Looks like Emily Reed, the left fielder, came all the way to back that throw up. But Green County Tech does push one across, and they take a 1-0 lead. I'll tell you what, an outstanding job there by the left fielder, Benton, of being at the right place at the right time and just playing textbook uh, softball, and backing your, backing your bases up. And, uh, hey, that's what happens. Kids back home, uh, if you're there and you back them up, you can get a big out, and that's a big out for them there at the plate, keeping that second run from scoring. Uh, big play, and that's why you back up your players. But Heidi Cox is going to head out to the mound and talk with their infield, maybe to settle the defense down. This is the first run that Benton has given up in the postseason. They had outscored their opposition 17 to nothing in their three state tournament games. To settle them in, you know, and they have Green County Tech does have the two hits, but nothing. They haven't gotten the ball out of the infield yet. So that's true. So, so kind of throwing it around there a little bit. Did the Lady Panther defense allows the run to come home to score? So call that a single and an error. Error charged to Elena Scott on the throw that hit the runner in the back. And also a second error was charged. Of course, that allowed the second runner to try to come home to score as that bond attempt is fouled straight back. So Benton charged with two errors on the one play. But as you just said, fortunate to get that second runner at the plate to keep the deficit of just a single tally. Bree Sage in the box. She struck out in the first. Down 0-1 in the count. Tries to lay down a bunt. Can't do so again as it's fouled back. She's in a hole 0-2. We got one out and uh... They're trying to get that runner over to third with less than two outs. That's what the, the thought process is here of trying to lay down a bunt. Now at two strikes, Sage likely going to be tasked with swinging away. And fouls that one directly back. Good job of battling there. And the leadoff batter is on second right now. Stokes is. So uh, I'm going to say anything in the gap might score her, Bobby. One down here, top of the third. Green County Tech's already pushed one across. That one fouled over the first base dugout. Sage staying alive. So if you're bitten, Eric, you've won 62 straight. You're 31 and 0 this season. You haven't given up a run in quite some time, and you're down one nothing here. What's the thought process? Well, they've got an offense to back up this pitching. That's for sure. And uh, again, they've got another pitcher they can bring in if they need to. But I think Scott will be okay. And again, Sage battling about. Staying alive, still 0-2. She's fouled away five consecutive pitches. Two on a bunt attempt, three swinging away. And just making Elena Scott work in the circle. And again, a couple bad throws has uh, got us to where we are right now. So I think that's one thing Coach Cox, Cox probably told him is that, uh, hey guys, let's just make the play and we're, we're, we should be already out of this inning. Kylie Stokes is the runner on second base. You can see her on the bottom left of your screen. That one up and in. Not a bad idea there by Scott to, to change the eye level. As Sage has fouled off numerous pitches in this at bat. Try to get her to chase one out of the zone. Of course, this all started with a leadoff batter getting smacked right in the forehead uh, with the first pitch. One, two to Sage. That one chopped left side. Nice diving stop by the third baseman. Samples, she tries to get the runner going to third, but can't. That's going to be an infield single. And runners on the corners with one out for Green County Tech. And an outstanding stop there by Samples. And uh, she had a pretty good throw over the third base. It's just uh, she had a pretty good hop on it. They do rule it a hit. Thought that might could have been considered a fielder's choice as they didn't try to get the runner at first. But I don't think she would have been able to get up in time to deliver a strike to first. 
That'd have been pretty impressive. She just slung across the, the diamond. So three singles now in the inning for Green County Tech, and they are certainly in business. Brielle Sage on at first, and Ava Carter fouls that one straight back. Again, one thing they're doing is just putting the ball in play, and they're making Ben play a little defense. One run on three hits now for Green County Tech. That run came across because of an error. Carter down 0-1. Left-on-left -left matchup. That one up and away. We don't have this stat in front of us, but uh, I'd like to know how many times Ben's really been behind. Yeah. This year. Well, they haven't lost yet, so tally would be very few. Ava Carter with an impressive 546 batting average. That one up in the zone. She grounded out the short to end the first inning, but she's got a chance to potentially blow this game open. Runners on the corners. They play here essentially straight up. Outfield line. That one fouled away. Look alive. We're back here behind us. Carter's the right fielder who's been playing up and been trying to get one of those uncommon outs there on a base hit. And uh, as we can tell, she's. Uh, she's a good hitter herself, batting 4, 4, uh, 447, 546, like you said. Two homers, 33 RBIs on the season for the right fielder. That one swinging a drive to right. Back goes Bethard. She makes the play just shy of the warning track. Going to be well deep enough to score the runner for third. Call that, call that an RBI sack fly for Carter. And GCT has a 2 nothing lead. Well, that ball carried just a little bit. And uh, again, a great job. 546. You know, know she's going to put the bat on the ball. And she put it right where she needed to to get that extra run in. Yeah, lifts that one high into right field. And Bethard has to scamper all the way back. The throw nowhere near in time. And the Lady Eagles up 2 nothing now. Carly Hollis going to step in. First pitch swinging right back to the pitcher. Easy toss over to first base, and Benton gets out of the inning, but not before Green County Tech finally strikes. They push across two runs on three hits, a pair of errors on the Lady Panthers, and after two and a half, Benton down 2 nothing. but they're coming up. As you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state and I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games and that makes it available for not just the fans in Central Arkansas or South Arkansas but fans around the entire state. I can only think of the kids in small towns and this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers and they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Learn more about the issues that impact our state with our long-running public affairs program, Arkansas Week. Fridays at 7.30 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. right here on Arkansas PBS. Green County Tech has struck first here in the 5A State Softball Championship. They've quieted the crowd, but now Benton has a chance to maybe start to climb back into this. The number nine hole hitter, Emily Reed, steps in to lead things off here in the home half of the third. And Benton's here for a reason, so when they get a Second look at this picture, things might be different in this inning. Reed, first pitch swing and skies one to left. Left center, they got a call for it, and nice easy play there by the center fielder. Kylie Stokes, one pitch, one out, here in the third. I tell you what, Reed just jumped into the box. It's <laughs> not a hitter, and she just took a hack at that one. Yep, that, pay, that pitch right down the middle. First pitch swing, and I like the aggressiveness, but just gets underneath it just a touch. Now Shelby Samples, as you just mentioned, Eric, will flip the lineup back over. She singled to right to start the contest. Some part of the triplets is, uh, as they got called, uh, with Samples, Scott, and Goodnight, these seniors. 
samples. That single back in the first, 21 singles on the season. That one, make it 22, slaps that one right back up the middle. And Bitten again has a base runner. They've had runners on the base pass in all three innings now. First two innings, they couldn't push one across. We'll see what they do here in the third. See what Scott's really looking to help our cause right here. Elena Scott, double zero the pitcher. He steps in. Brandon into a 6-3 double play, but hit it hard in that first inning. This happened to be right at the shortstop going towards the second base bag. That time she's chasing the first pitch up around her eyes and it's fouled away. Well, you gotta love the Lady Panthers. They're, <laughs> they're pretty aggressive. They're in the box and uh, they want to make something happen. Of course, they know they have to being down two. They're not make, wasting any pitches. They're coming out swinging. Only one strikeout up to this point for Carly Burrow. A change up there, well short of the plate. Scott wisely lays off to even the count of the one apiece. You know, one thing Coach Reynolds probably told us, GTC bunch, is, hey, guys, let's don't make errors. Let's just keep the ball in front of us and get the easy outs and don't give them anything extra. We got a lead right here. It's a good look at Carly Burrow, the starting pitcher for Green County Tech, 19 and 2 on the season, 123 strikeouts, including the one today. That one paints the outside corner and gets the call. Really nice pitch there for Burrow. She gets ahead in the count. You know, the whip number is always interesting to look at. You know, that's walks and hits per innings pitched. And it's below one for Burrow, so she's not used to having many base runners. That one, change up, got her swing underneath it, popped it up on the left side, and Zoe Reynolds comes in and makes the catch for the second out. It's a good job by the third baseman Reynolds just to take him in and uh, call him off and tell him she's got it. That's exactly what you're trying to do with the change up, just make him slow down the bat just enough and swings right underneath it. And, uh, Easy play for the third baseman Reynolds coming in. Now Alyssa Houston going to step up to the plate. Well, Houston's the one, like you said earlier, <laughs> she hit the hardest single that we saw this weekend. So first pitch swing and flies one over the right side. That one's going to get out of play. Benton is consistent and they are aggressive. They are going to attack early in the count. Well, she could tie this game pretty quick. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Look at the season stats for Houston. 11 home runs. That leads the team. Well, I'm not a betting man, especially on high school sports, but I'd wager that's uh, near the state's lead. May have to task Kyle Sutherland of Scorebook Live for the official numbers. One and one's the count, two out here in the third. Nice change up there. Does not get the call though. That one just off the plate. At least deemed so by our home plate umpire, Glenn Prince. So now Houston's ahead in the count, two and one. Tried to throw behind the runner, but Shelby Samples gets back with plenty of time. That one well off the plate. And now three and one. You gotta be really careful right here, Alyssa Houston. You cannot leave one over the heart of the plate. As you mentioned, Eric, she could tie this game up in a hurry. So 3-1 the count, two outs here in the bottom of the third. Change up, that's off the edge of the plate and ball four. So Houston's on base for the second time today. Draws the walk, now two runners on base for the Lady Panthers and the cleanup hitter, Riley Gilmore. Going to stride to the dish. Well, she's got three home runs for the year. And I notice uh, Bobby, the Ben squad's got the green ribbons that they've got. And they, they've got them tied on. I think some of them wearing on their hands or in the head. Talk to the coach, uh, mental mental health awareness. Uh, and so they picked that to wear, and uh, I think that's pretty important. First pitch to Gilmore, ruled a strike. Catches a, just a bit to the outside corner. So Burrow gets ahead in the count. I mentioned the home run total for Gilmore, but hitting 432 on the season. That one popped up. Play for the catcher, and she makes it. Hannah Stallings records the third out of the inning, and Green County Tech is feeling it. Benton leaves two more on the base path, and after three, the home squad down 2-0. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports.
There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's gonna be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell, and if somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect, that's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Since 1976, McCormick Equipment Rental and Sales has been equipping Arkansans for the tough jobs, construction equipment and rentals, service and sales, and a proud underwriter of Arkansas PBS Sports. Celebrate game day under the arches. Access to tons of benefits through our rewards program are available today on the McDonald's app. We're loving it. As we enter the fourth, Green County Tech has a 2-0 lead, but there's going to be a change in the circle for Benton. That's a good look at Alyssa Houston, who moves from third base to the circle. 13-0 on the season, a .51 ERA, 166 strikeouts, just 31 walks and 81 innings of work. She also has five saves. So Benton makes the change in the circle. We'll see if that can slow down this Green County Tech offense that is starting to get a good look at the starter, Elena Scott. And one thing that Ben knew and talking to Coach Cox before the ball game is probably one of the best one-two punches uh, in the state when it comes to uh, high school pitchers. So Lydia Bethards moves from right field to third base. And then steps in Carly Hollis on that one. Major League, that one had come off the leg there a little yeah. bit. It was well into the backstop. I look down to make sure I've got my substitutions correct, and all of a sudden that one hits the backstop. Bob Buecher nowhere to be found for that call. <laughs> Just a little bit outside. So one of those was the count to Hollis. She grounded it out to second. Her first at bat. That one well up and away. 2-0. Oh. Got to settle down if you're the new pitcher, Alyssa Houston. Gets the call. So Hollis now, two and one. Where's number six for Green County Tech? 448 average on the season. Leads the team with 38 RBIs. That one off the hands, and she's going to take first base. That one might get. I see Coach Cox coming out of the dugout, but. Yep. There's a good look at it there. You know, it didn't react like a. A player who just got hit on the hand, but you know, it's demon on reaction. So like that first time around, she took one off the hand, did she? Yeah. It was a foul ball. Yeah. She sold that one a little bit better, though. Yeah. Sometimes it just pays to go ahead and drop the first. So, so Hollis leads off the fourth with a hit by a pitch. Marley Spear now up at the plate. So lays down a bunt, or at least it tips too. That one goes foul. Spear walked in her first at bat. That's the correction. This is Carly Burrow. Lost a batter in my, my lineup sheet. So Spear was hit by the pitch. My, my mistake. And Burrow tries to get a button down again. Fouls it straight back 0 and 2. If you get those things down, they can be costly if. Uh, Got a bunt run on there. You get you a quick uh, pop up and, a, and, and catch it, and then all of a sudden you turn around and turn that into a double play. Two nothing, top of the fourth here at the Bitten Athletic Complex. Green County Tech has a lead on the host school. Swing and a miss. First punch out since moving to the circle for Houston. Second time Burrow has struck out today. 
And Avery Stokes now going to stride in. She struck out back in the second. Hey, what Houston, she's looks like she's halfway there when she lets that ball go. I mean, she totally different look here for Green County Tech when they're facing Houston versus Scott. That one right across the middle of the plate for strike one. Tons of substitutions as far as positions. For Benton, Bethard is now at third. She moved from right to third base. That one low and inside. The pitcher, Scott, she's now in left field. Emily Reed, who was in left field, now in right field. So if you're scoring at home, hope you're using the pencil. All right. Looking over at yours, it's got some scratches on it. It does. <laughs> I use the pen because I'm old and can't see lead as well as I can ink. Swings through that one. It does Stokes strike two. I feel like Benton needs a, to put up a goose egg here and get it, get their offense back on the field. And you know they want to get back to that plate and uh, be able to face Burroughs. Avery Stokes down one and two. Quickly erased. The high heat couldn't catch up with it. The second strikeout already now for Houston. See what Houston was climbing the ladder on that one for sure. There was no way she could catch up with that pitch. 168 strikeouts and 82 innings of work now for Alyssa Houston. That's almost two strikeouts an inning. It is two strikeouts an inning. My math is good. Not many teams have found a way to put the ball in play against number 14. So two down, runner on first for Hannah Stallings. That one catches the outer corner. Stalling was hit by a pitch in the previous inning. Came around to score. A one fouled away to the right side. Houston just attacking the Green County Tech hitters. So with two strikes here, usually you don't come right back at them, but I, I think the zone that Houston's in, I think she's just going to try to throw a buyer. Yeah, since the first batter that she faced, sent it one to the backstop, then eventually hit Marley Spear. She has thrown nothing but flames and strikes. See the towel that she gets back to before the pitch. The 0-2 offering. That one up out of the zone. It's humid out here tonight, and there is rain moving this direction. So it could get even stickier before the moisture starts to fall. Hopefully, I even get this game in before things get too wild. Don't look at the radar. <laughs> that one, well out of the zone, two and two. I made the mistake of looking at the radar between innings, and I quickly closed my phone. It's championship game number 20 of the weekend. I haven't been altered yet, so please don't start it now. Two and two pitch popped up left side. That's going to get out of play, though, as Stalling stays alive. I'll tell you what, Stalling's getting her hands through on that one. That's uh, pretty impressive at bat because, like you said a while ago, Houston is throwing some flames. Yep, she's throwing hard. Two and two. I think that contest back about a month ago has done Greene County Tech well, even though they didn't beat Benton. I had a chance to see him up close and personal. That one out of the zone now, full count. Stalin, she was down 0-2 in this plate appearance, has worked it back full with two outs now. That's going to allow the runner at first, Marley Spear, to take off at first motion. So the runner's going to go, full counts. And Spears, excuse me, Stalin swings right through it. Three strikeouts in the inning. For Houston, Green County Tech leaves one at first. Benton coming up bottom of the fourth as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Anticipation is building in the matchups that will decide what Arkansas's local and state political and judicial scene will look like. So join us as the votes come in on election 2022. Statewide primary coverage on Tuesday, May 24th, beginning at 7 p.m. It's analysis and insight on the races you care about. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, 
And the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever and know they're going to get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job and, and I think it's part of education. For a copy of any of the state championship games, go to mnmproductions.net to place your order. We are headed to the bottom of the fourth. Green County Tech hanging on to a 2-0 lead. And Benton, who have had base runners in all three innings, but have left four on the base pass. All four hits have gone for naught. We'll see if that changes here as Gracie Redmond's going to lead off the home half of the fourth. 427 average on the season. Three doubles, 26 RBIs for number 88. Well, Benton wouldn't be here if this bottom part couldn't swing the sticks, and uh, right now that's what they're relying on. That one over for a strike. Nice job to get ahead in the count by Carly Burrow. Anna Stallings is behind the plate. I'm not sure we've gone around the horn. We'll do so defensively after this pitch, and that one rolled low. Westland Burnsides in left. Kylie Stokes is in center. Ava Carter out in right. They haven't had much action tonight. Zoe Reynolds is at third. Bree Sage is at short. Avery Stokes at second. Marley Spear, man in the bag over at first base. 1 1 to Redmond. That one out of the zone. Two and one. Been just a little up. With the flag just is completely still out there right now. Two and one count to Grace Redman, who popped out to first her first time, and that one is smoked into left field. A leadoff single for Benton. It wasn't popped out at all there. That was popped all right. It was popped right between the shortstop and the third baseman, and uh, that was hit on the rope. The fifth single of the contest for Benton. And the third inning, they've had the leadoff man on. Shelby Samples, a couple singles, but now Redmond right in the middle of the lineup with a single to left. Hobson in the run at first base. Dakota Hobson, the junior. Aubrey Goodnight going to step up now to the plate. She singled to second in the second. Good night steps in five hits on the evening for Benton tries to lay down a bunt and that goes foul. Trying to move that over that runner over excuse me and I think one thing you have to pay attention to is as much as Green County Tech crashed there you got to make sure somebody covers third base. That's exactly right that's what could have happened to him early in the ball game and you know if you're the third baseman you definitely want to pick that up as quick as possible. Uh, and, uh, and the, I guess the, the normal rotation first and third crash then second and shortstop go to the cornerbacks. That one slapped right side going to go to the first for the easy out might have had a chance to go to second to get the force. But Avery Stokes makes the easy play gets the force out at first one down. And Stokes caught that on the glove side so she thought the best place for her to go best opportunity was to get that out at first and uh, Paying out on out right now. Addison Davis now comes up. She slapped one back to the pitcher. But you're exactly right, Eric. It's always get the get the outs, get the sure thing. Benton has just hit the ball on the nose all night. More times than not, it's been right out of defender. Davis swings through that one. Strike one. What they almost caught them sleeping over here, like you said a while ago, Bobby. The shortstop almost didn't cover third and. Uh, you had the third baseman in close for the slap and get away with one. This is the, the, the game within the game that is softball. Moving runners over, try to steal an extra base by not paying attention or not being fundamentally sound. That one slapped left side, goes foul. I mean, she's got a little bit of pop. We saw it earlier in the ball game where she laid one that was probably an inch or two just foul, but uh, what if I think if she lays it right in that in that green spot right there, we could see a score. So 0 2's the count to Addison Davis. 
Harley Burrow working with a 2-0 lead for Greene County Tech. That one chopped. Foul left side again. Nice job by Davis to stay alive. Hard to tell from here when they got a, hop, a big hop like that if <laughs> how close it is to foul territory or not. That was way foul. Dakota Hobson's the runner out at second. That one well high. One and two. She escaped that one. That come close to the face mask. Yep. So Hobson came in to run for Redmond. She's now in scoring position with one down here in the fourth. Just got a piece of that, did Addison Davis. And we'll do the one-two count again. One thing with that lead that uh, Hobson's getting over there on second, when she pops off that bag, if they end up getting a uh, short pop-up, they can end up turning two on this one. Davis waits on that changeup. And slaps the third base and moves the runner over. Nice strong throw though by Zoe Reynolds gets the second out of the inning. And now the Lady Panthers have a runner at third, but with two outs. That's getting the job done, but also a nice job defensively for Green County Tech. A little bit gets them, gets her over there where they want her, but right now they've got two outs. And uh, the way this defense has been playing for GTC, uh, you got to like their chances. Lydia Bethards. Now steps up to the plate. She grounded out to third her first time at the plate. Now we're going to have a little convention in the circle. A little pep talk. And her little time to fix her contact. It helps to see in this game, I'm told. Especially if you're the pitcher. <laughs> now the chemistry between the pitcher Burrow and the catcher Stallings is ever so important because the pass ball could result in Benton's first run of the game. That one right up the middle. Going to be a tough play for Stokes to throw the first, not in time. And Bitten is on the board. See okay, what they were playing back just a little bit. And uh, uh, with the speed that Benton has, uh, it allowed that girl get, to get there just a step. And Lydia Bethard sends this one right past the pitcher. The second baseman, Stokes, has to run to her right, range to her right, and her throw not in time. Even though it was a good throw, and Bitten's on the board. This crowd has certainly gotten back into things, Eric. Well, you know they would, and uh, why not? <laughs> They've got a, a great person in the circle, and this offense can kick. That chopper right to Reynolds at third. She steps and throws and retires Emily Reed, who's second straight inning. She swung at the first pitch. What's well, Mitten is done in the fourth, but not before they get one run back. One run on two hits, but they leave one. We are more than halfway home here in the 5A state championship game. And you're watching it on Arkansas PBS Sports. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And the Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. This month in Passport on the PBS Video app. Can you just slap me a little bit? Slap me, thank you. I've never put myself under this much pressure. I'm desperate to win. Nunu has cared for children whose parents have nowhere else to turn. It's not just a job. This is really our life. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Get all the latest info from Arkansas PBS. Visit by ARPBS.org forward slash sign up. We're through four innings of play here at the Benton Athletic Complex, and Green County Tech has a two to one lead on Benton. It's the 5A State Softball Championship. Appreciate you tuning in. Bobby Swafford here. That's Eric King, and Green County Tech steps up to the plate, leading off Zoe Reynolds, the nine hole hitter. 
especially with the last two innings went pretty quick, even though those are the innings we've actually had some runs put on the board. Melissa Houston started the game at third. She's now in the circle and she's had tremendous success. Struck out the side in the fourth. But she's fallen behind Reynolds here 2 0. So she stepped up there and it went deep to center field or first at bat. That one out of the zone as well. 3 0. You tell Reynolds. It's gonna one of those players that, you know, kind of a, not necessarily a slap hitter, but likes to chop it right off the ground and try to use her speed to beat out a throw. But you got to believe at 3 0, she might be just taking this one to see if she can get a free pass. That one ruled a strike at the top of the zone. Well, that's not her pitch either. And I think yep. what Coach Reynolds just told her, said, hey, uh, good eye, that's not your pitch. Battle back. That's smart when you're facing a slap hitter or a hitter of the style of Reynolds. You want to stay top of the zone because, of course, what she's trying to do is get on top of the ball and drive it straight into the turf. That one well out of the zone, though, and Reynolds earns herself a walk. Second time Zoe Reynolds has been on base. And the leadoff lady is on for Greene County Tech. Center fielder number 24, County Stokes. Stokes batting 487 with seven home runs. You know, we've had a lot of leadoff hitters this week uh, with some high home run totals. Well, that's, that's the idea. Put your best player in that top spot. Give them as many at bats during a contest as you can. Stokes is one for two today. She struck out in the first, had a single, and scored in the third. It's two to one. Green County Tech out in front. That one swung and missed by Stokes. Nice job by Houston there. She took a little off of it. Not necessarily a full changeup. Just didn't unload it. Got it across the plate. She probably left that one a little bit until spot she didn't want to. She got away with that pitch. Got lucky there. 1-1 one, one count to Stokes. She tries to pull the bunt back in time and can't do so. And it's fouled away. And they're going to say that hit her? What she did. They she are. Did exactly what you said earlier, Bobby, is that no matter what happens there, that ball came off there pretty hard. But uh, like you hmm. said, sell it. Yep. She's going to say that one hit her, and she takes off for first base. And the, the Benton faithful not enthralled with that call. It's been, what, three instances now that a, a, a pitch has gotten in on the hands of Green County Tech. Twice they've been rewarded first base. The other time was ruled a foul ball. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't want to bring this term up, but I just saw a flash of light and I didn't see any cameras. <laughs> so Bree Sage steps up to the, to the plates. Runners on first and second. Nobody out here in the fifth. She squares around the bunt, pulls it back. That one up and out of the zone. So what a runner here. And you, you move these runners over and you get them in second and third with one out. Uh, well, Green County Tech's been putting the ball in play. Anything can happen. Green County Tech two runs on three hits. That one low and inside, ball two. So all of a sudden, Houston having a little command issues. Walk the leadoff Reynolds and hit Stokes. I don't think it had anything to do with it, but I'm squaring around the butt might shake her up just a little bit. I know you got the corners rushing in, but uh, sometimes you just try to be a little too fine, try not to give them a good pitch to bunt. 2-0 pitch. That one well out of the zone. Ball three. You got to think that Sage is going to get the red light here. It's going to be take all the way. I think that's exactly what Coach Reynolds uh, from Green County just uh, told him. Shelby Sample steps into the circle, try to calm her pitcher down. That one going to catch the outer part of the plate. Three and one. Just got to relax. Of course, you know, the, the longer this game goes and the longer Green County Tech stays in front, the pressure is just going to continue to mount on the top ranked Benton Lady Panthers. That bunt laid down and it came back and hit her in the box, and that's going to be a rule to foul ball. So nice job by Houston to work back to a full count. Tell you what, they got lucky there because that was a perfectly laid down bunt. It just popped right straight up off that turf and uh, hit her. So three and two is the count to Bree Sage. 
Struck out and also has a single tonight. Swung right through that one, a huge strikeout for Houston. See what a great job there by Houston to come back after falling down and uh, uh, getting that batter. That is big time strikeout for Houston. And it looks like we have now gone into a lightning delay. So what the lightning delay means uh, in, in Arkansas high school athletics that we have been stopped for at least 30 minutes. And for each lightning flash within a certain amount of distance, we are going to have another 30 minutes. So that clock will reset it with every flash of lightning. So kind of put it where we're at right now. Green County Tech has a two to one lead as we sit in the top of the fifth. Runners on first and second with one out. Ava Carter at the plate for Green County Tech. But we are officially in a weather delay, and hopefully this will get through quickly. So Eric, as this one is paused, obviously you got to think that this has got to benefit Benton because Green County Tech, who has the lead, is, is now has to go think about that lead for at least 30 minutes. Uh, and, and then they had the momentum. I mean, you know, they had the momentum going, they had base runners, and so you really, I'm, I'm with you, you've got to think you got to think they're going to regroup and uh, uh, come back just like that Ben squad is. Hey, they, <laughs> they've not gotten beaten this year for a reason. And, uh, you know, that team that they have out there right now can definitely put some runs on the board and uh, look for a bit of different Benton team coming back uh, after this weather delay. So we are going to step aside from the 5A state softball championship game because of a weather delay. Again, Green County Tech leading Benton two to one top of the fifth. Be sure to stick around and we'll get you updated as soon as we know something as we are now in a lightning delay. Stick around, you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. <laughs> Welcome in to the Benton Athletic Complex. I am Derek Walter in this continuation game of the 5A State Softball Championship between Green County Tech and Benton. Unfortunately, last night we had a little bit of a weather system that moved in here in the top half of the fifth inning and we had to pause the game and and bring it back here today at two we had a really good softball game in the fifth inning green county tech currently leads it two to one in the top half of the fifth inning there is one out we will see two base runners on board reynolds will be at second base stokes will be at first base and it looks like ava carter will be batting for Green County Tech here in the top half of the fifth inning. To go back and look a little bit of our scoring plays last night, Green County Tech scored on an error in the top half of the third inning, made the score one to nothing. And then in the, also in the top half of the third inning, scored on a fielder's choice, pop out to right field, where Green County Tech to, took a two to nothing lead. Right before the weather delay in the bottom half of the fourth inning, Bethard singled to the right side. Hobson scored for Benton's first run of the game. And so as the coaches meet in this continuation game here at home plate, it is two to one. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the defense first for Benton. In left field is Emily Reed. Center field, Aubrey Goodnight. Right field, Lydia Bethards. At first base, Riley Gilmore. Second base, Addison Davis. Shortstop, Shelby Samples. And at third base will be Alyssa Houston. Doing the catching today is Gracie Redman. And Elena Scott will do the pitching for Benton as they take the field in this 5A state finals matchup. Take a quick look at our games that we've had this week. We started the game with a 2A, started the week with a 2A final. Tuckerman beat East Poinsett County 6-2. 6A softball on Thursday night. Bentonville beat Cabot 3-1 on Friday. Taylor took down Westside 9-1. The nightcap on Friday in the 4A final. Valley View beat Nashville. And then on Saturday, the first game of the day, we had Ashdown take down, took down Atkins by a score of six to zero. The umpires for today's game, Glenn Prince will be behind home plate, John Davis at first, and Dan Henry down the third baseline. We're almost ready for this continuation as Scott will take her warm-up pitches.
That is Houston doing the pitching for Benton today. She pitched 32 pitches last night, pitched 1.1 innings. She walked one and struck out four. She faced seven batters, and she will get to work here in the top half of the fifth inning. Reminder, there is one out. We've got Reynolds on second, Stoke on first. As you see Alyssa Houston there, she is ready for this game. Great crowd on hand today as Benton, the host school. As Ava Carter steps in and waits for pitch number one. That pitch catching the outside corner for strike one. One thing we've talked about through the week, these pitchers need to get ahead in the count, and that is what Houston has done so far. The 0-1 pitch, swung on and missed. A big cut there from Carter. She's behind in the count 0-2. Benton had two errors last night that were costly. Green County Tech was able to score a big swing and a miss, and what a way to start here on Sunday with a big strikeout by Alyssa Houston. That is her fifth strikeout on the game. And that'll bring up Carly Hollis, the senior. She is the designated pitcher. Hollis had two at-bats. Yesterday, she grounded out to the second baseman and grounded out to the pitcher. She'll step in, runners at first and second. Two outs. That pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. Houston, the 0-1. That's a low pitch. Swung on and missed for strike two. So we've seen Alyssa Houston work very efficiently this afternoon. She's attacked the strike zone and been ahead in both of these batters. She'll get the call from her catcher, Redmond, in the 0-2 pitch. She's fouled back into the screen. Keeps the count 0-2. If you're Coach Reynolds yesterday, it was a, in the third inning, a huge inning, scoring two runs against the Benton Panthers. Talk a little bit about Benton. They are undefeated this year, which in any sport, that is a very, very hard thing to do. You've got to be on every day in order not to, to lose one game. A big swing and a miss. What an inning by Alyssa Houston as they go. 2-3 here in the continuation game. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championships. We'll be back. With food, fuel, snacks, drinks, and more, make big bread. Your only stop when traveling. Coaches, don't forget about the free fountain drinks for you and the bus driver. Visit BigRedStores.net for locations nearest you. We will have one, two, three for Benton, Sample Scott, Houston. 
We'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Right before our break last night, Bent was able to get their first run of the ball game. We'll see if they can continue something here in the fifth inning. Samples a 440 hitter on the year. She'll settle in and wait for the first pitch. That pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. Samples with 20 singles, 16 doubles, four triples on the year. Carly Burrow will do the pitching for Green County Tech as that one's swung on, hit to Stokes at second. She'll fire with Spear for out number one. Let's look at the Green County defense. Starting in left field, Burnside, center field, Stokes, right field, Carter. In the infield at first base, Marley Spear at second, Avery Stokes at shortstop, Bree Sage, and at third, Zoe Reynolds. Carly Burrow doing the pitching, and Hannah Stallings behind the plate. Scott up now for Benton. It's a swing and a miss for strike one. Scott, 494 hitter on the year. Scott hit into a double play her first time up and grounded out to the third baseman. Scott waiting on the call from the dugout. She looks at her wristband there and she'll deliver the 0-2. That was a high pitch and good layoff there by Scott. She really wanted to take a hack at it, but she held off and the count's now one and two. The one two now from Burrow is a base hit into left field. The shortstop Sage tried to get a glove on it, could not make the play and Benton's got something going here with one out in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Nice hit there. Something yesterday that Benton really struggled with got the Bat on the ball, but just hit it right to Green County Tech and really struggled getting something going yesterday. And they're starting the fifth inning off here with some good timely hitting. That pitch outside, they're gonna throw down to first base, Stallings to Spear and Scott will get back safely. Burrow behind in the count, one to nothing. We'll look at her stats from this game here in just a second. Off-speed pitch, a nice pitch. Cross the plate for strike one. Burrow yesterday and today, 56 pitches. She gave up seven hits, one run, one walk, and one strikeout. She's gonna try to keep Green County Tech's lead here. Is that pitch? It's outside for ball two. Talked about this a little bit yesterday, the delayed call by softball umpires makes it hard for impatient people like me to wait on the striker ball call. The 2-1 now from Carly Burrow. That is hit right up the middle, a great hit there. Stokes fields the ball cleanly and throws it in, but the Panthers have something going. Runners on first and second, only one out. And that'll bring up Riley Gilmore. Gilmore, a 432 hitter on the year. With three home runs, she's got 25 RBIs. Houston's at first base, Scott at second. I believe we had a courtesy runner. It looks like 23, McKenzie. Worsham will come in and run. She is at first base. Burrows, first pitch to Gilmore. Slapped right up the middle off the pitcher Burrows glove. A nice play by the shortstop to get one out, but she throws it over Spears' head, and a Scott will come in and score and tie the game for Benton. Good things happen when you put the ball in play, and that is exactly what Gilmore did for Benton. Not a bad play at first by Sage as she fielded it cleanly, stepped on second, tried to turn two, and unfortunately sailed over Spears' head. 
And Green County Tech now will have a mound visit, try to calm everyone down as the game is now tied two to two. If you're Green County Tech, you had to be worried about that. You played so well yesterday, coming back today, momentum was on your side there. Um, Benton struggling to hit the ball in the gaps, and we can tell already that is not the case. They are slapping it where Green County Tech isn't. And we'll see if Burrow can get things going, maybe get a third out here for the Eagles. Gilmore at first base. And it looks like Gracie Redmond, the catcher, will step in. She is a senior. Batting 427 on the year. She'll wait for her first pitch. That pit, pitch inside for a strike. Burrow has not done a terrible job at getting ahead in the count, in, in count so far today. The 0 1 now from Burrow. That pitch low and inside. Brings the count to 1 and 1. That pitch is belted down the third baseline. Foul. It was about two or three feet from being a huge play for Benton. Green County Tech, this is their first trip in school history to the finals. They knew going into it, as we talked to Coach Reynolds, they had a tall task of trying to knock off the Benton Panthers who are undefeated for two years in a row. Crosby will steal second base. That ball goes in the outfield. The center fielder Stokes there to back the throw up. Benton now has a runner in scoring position with two outs. Redmond will step back in. She's going to show bunt. She'll pull back and swing away. That one. Hit down the left field line, foul. In case you were wondering, our view is just as good as yours down the left field line. It is hard to see what's foul and fair past that dugout. Redmond will take a couple practice swings and she'll get ready for another 2-2 pitch. Redmond a single in the fourth inning. As that is hit down the third baseline, a base hit. Crosby comes around to score, and Benton has just taken their first lead of the ball game. What a battle between Burrow and Redmond, and Redmond is the one that comes up with the win. She smacks it down the third baseline and gives Benton their first lead of the ball game. We talked about Redmond earlier. Redmond, that is her 27th RBI on the year. I can't think that there was a bigger one than that right there to get Benton their first lead. Coach Heidi Cox is relieved that Benton finally has taken the lead. Good night up now. Good night got a single in the second inning to right field and grounded out to second base. First pitch. To good night. Misses for ball one. Good night, a 349 hitter. Burrow giving up nine hits in this game. The 1 0 pitch. That's inside and up in the zone for ball two. So something that Burrow's done well today, get ahead and count. 
Unfortunately for the Eagles, she is behind 2-0. and oh. That ball smacked to the second baseman, Stoke. She fields it, throws on to Spear for out number three. A great inning for the Panthers. They score two and take the lead. They strand one. You're watching the Centennial Bank Softball Championships. Spear, Burrow, and Stokes are the five, six, seven batters, and that's who we will see first here in the top half of the sixth inning. Centennial Bank is honored to be the corporate sponsor of the Arkansas Activities Association State Championship Games. Congratulations to the athletes, coaches, and parents for all your hard work and winning spirit that brought you to the championships. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Marley Spear will step in. She's a freshman. Batting 365 and a big cut and a miss there for strike one. Boy, to start Sunday, Houston has been very good, working very effectively, attacking the strike zone, and Green County Tech really struggling to, to hit anything off of her. Another big cut from Spear and another swing and a miss for strike two. If you're Green County Tech, your nerves have got to gotta be starting that pitch out of the zone. A good pitch there by Houston to try to get her, try to swing at something outside the zone. Three for 16 as a team today for Green County Tech. That's a 188 average. A swing and a miss, strike three. Four pitches, one out for Alyssa Houston. That is her seventh strikeout on the day, 43 pitches. We'll see Carly Burrow come in now. She's the pitcher, she's a junior, batting 333 on the year. She struck out in the second and struck out in the fourth as she takes a ball outside. The 1-0, it's a great pitch on the outer part of the zone, just missing for ball two. So Burrow ahead. She'll try to get something going here in the top half of the sixth inning. That pitch is about the same spot and it is off the plate for ball three. So like we said, Burrow struck out twice. A walk here is big for Green County Tech is they're in desperate need of a base runner. The 3-0, and that misses high. And something that's uncharacteristic in this game for Melissa Houston is four straight balls. And she'll walk the pitcher. And Green County Tech has something going here in the top half of the sixth with one out. 
The seven hole, Avery Stokes will step in. She's 0 for 2. She is a junior, batting 487 on the year. She's got some power, seven home runs on the year, and I can't think of a, a bigger time to have one than right now. The first pitch to her is in the same spot. That one catches the corner, excuse me, for strike one. From my not so good vantage point, that looked to be inside. Nonetheless, it is 0 and 1. That pitch high evens the count at one. Stokes struck out in the second, struck out in the fourth. One of two of Houston's seven strikeout victims today. And the 1-1 pitch, and that's fouled off into the screen for strike two. So Houston, a four-pitch walk to Burrow and is able to battle back and get, in the, get ahead in the count. One and two to Stokes. Outfield, Reed, good night. Playing at normal depth. That pitch across the plate for called strike three. A big strikeout for Alyssa Houston. As she got Stokes looking. Two outs now. That'll bring up Stallings. She's a junior, she's 0 for 1. She did have a strikeout in the fourth, and she was hit by a pitch in the third. First pitch to her is across the plate for strike one. Off-speed pitch missing high. Emily Reed is in right field for Benton. So that's Scott Goodnight Reed from left to right. And the 1-1 one -one pitch is fouled off into the screen. The infield right now for Benton. Gilmore at first, Davis at second, Samples at short. Bethard moved to third. Alyssa Houston started the game as the third baseman. She is now the pitcher. The one-two pitch, low and inside, missing the zone for ball two. That pitch is fouled off. Counts even at two and two. The 2-2 two -two from Houston, and that is popped up down the third baseline. Bethards and samples will run over, and that's out of play. Count still even at two. Green County Tech down to their last out here in the sixth inning. Due up for Benton. Next inning is Davis, Bethards, and Reed. The 2-2, two -two, and that's high in the zone. The count is now full. Fans make some noise here for the 3-2, and that's low and inside, and ball gets away from the catcher, Redmond, and she'll hustle back, and Green County Tech's got runners at first and second with two outs. That'll bring up Reynolds, the sophomore. She is one for one as the infield will come in and give Houston some fist bumps, encouragement, trying to get out of the inning while keeping 
the lead here in the top half of the sixth. Reynolds had a single her first time up in the third and walked in the fifth. Fastball down the plate for strike one. Reynolds a 368 hitter, 19 RBIs, seven doubles and one triple. She is fast with 14 stolen bases. So that pitch, pitch misses outside for ball one. Green County Tech two for five with runners in scoring position on the game. As Houston throws an off-speed pitch outside and not a bad job there by Reynolds just to poke it foul and hang in there. The count's now one and two with two down. Stallings at first, Burrow at second. Alyssa Houston trying to get the Panthers out of the inning. That pitch way outside for ball two. Good crowd on hand today as a lot of them coming back in this chilly afternoon. Trying to see their team win a state championship. The 2-2, a great off-speed pitch high and she strikes her out. Green County Tech leaves two runners on. Benton still has the lead, three to two. Welcome back to the 5A State Championship. Derek Walter here for the continuation of the game after a lightning and rain infested night ended our state championship. Brought us back here today at two. Bobby Swafford and Eric King started the game yesterday and gonna try to finish our great weekend of state championships off. Benton up three to two here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. As Carly Burrow's first pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. Melissa, excuse me, Addison Davis, the junior up for Benton. The 0 1 pitch, and that's slap foul. Missing line by about three feet there. Davis grounded out to the pitcher, grounded out to the third baseman her first time up. Burnside and Stokes, the left and center fielders playing the left side of the field. Hard hit to Sage, she'll throw on to Spear for out number one. It's good defense there by Green County Tech is obviously the scouting report. Showed that she hits to the left side. Stokes really was playing in left center, Burnside far left and that ball went right where they thought to the shortstop Sage. That'll bring up Bethards now. 
The eight hole hitter, she's a freshman. This year, she's batting 314. She'll wait on the 1 0 pitch. That pitch is belted into left field. That is a fair ball. She'll round first. Bethard's on her way to second. She'll slide in safely. That ball was belted. She took an inside pitch and pulled it down the left field line. A good one out hit by Benton, and they're going to try to add to their lead here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Bethard's two for three on the day. That'll bring up the nine hole, Emily Reed. Reed, 222 hitter. She'll kind of check swing and foul it to the right. She's got eight RBIs on the year and be a big ninth one if she can score Bethard from second base. Coach Cox will come over and have a word. It's the state title game. We've got hitters on both sides, and if you're Benton, a couple insurance runs here would be nice. The 0-1, and she shows bunt and pulls back as Sawings jumps up. See what Reynolds, the third baseman, does. She's playing even with the bag right now. Reed showed bunt, she won't this time, and she'll foul it off. Spear, the first baseman, runs over, but it hits the top of the dugout. Counts one and two. Seems like every one of these state title games have been good, solid, fundamental softball games. The one, two, an off speed pitch inside missing. Evens a count at two. State titles for Benton 2004, 2005, 2014, and 2021. Pitch missing. We talked earlier, this is the first time Green County Tech has made the state softball championship. The count full now to Emily Reed. Reed lays off a high pitch and that's ball four. Benton runners on first and second with only one out. And the leadoff samples is up. She's two for three. She's a leader on this Benton Panther team and we're gonna see a coach visit here. You can kind of see him signaling with his hands, just calm down. Still only a one run game. Green County Tech will be down to three outs at the top of the seventh. Panthers the home team on the scoreboard. Bent with 10 hits today, and two errors. Green County Tech, three hits on one error. Those two errors were costly for Benton last night. Is it what gave the Eagles a two to nothing lead? Coach Reynolds goes back to the dugout. We're gonna have our first pitch. Pitch missing high for ball one. Look at your samples here. Excuse me, Burrow, you wanna be very, very careful in what you throw the leadoff samples. Samples a base hit to right field. Another single, and then she grounded out. This one hit to the second baseman, Stokes. She'll fire over to Spear for out number two. A big out for the Eagles there as runners do advance, but my goodness, Samples was two for three at that point. That'll bring up Scott now. Scott is going to UCA next year. She is batting a 494 on the year. 38 hits. Hit 
That ball, I think, was tipped for strike one. Bethard's on third, Emily Reed on second. Scott's the batter. The 0-1 from Burrow. Chop foul. Brings the count 0-2. Burrow now with 83 pitches. She's given up 10 hits. Walked two and struck out one as that pitch misses. One and two the count. To the two hole Scott. Burrow will step on the rubber and deliver the one two pitch. Chop to the first baseman, Spear, good play, steps on the back for out number three. Benton had a threat. Six, but a good bounce back by Green County Tech. Our score still three to two. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championships. Green County Tech down to their last three outs, and they've got batters one, two, and three up. Stokes one for two in the game. She'll try to get something going here for Green County Tech in the top of the seventh. That one fouled off. We've talked about Alyssa Houston a lot today, 64 pitches. She's pitched three innings, giving up three walks and nine strikeouts. The 0 1 pitch, and that's swung on and missed for strike two. These Benton fans can taste an undefeated season and a back to back state titles. They're on the edge of their seats. The 0 2 pitch misses. From the stands, it's really hard to gauge that up and down zone. You can tell from home a lot better on that outfield camera. And it's a good call by the home plate umpire. That ball fouled. Down by Coach Reynolds. Stokes scored. She struck out looking in the first, scored in the third, and was hit by a pitch in the fifth. Eagles scored two runs in the third inning yesterday. As Houston's pitch is fouled into the screen. Stokes, Sage, and Carter will be our three batters for the Eagles. Houston gets the call and she'll deliver home. That ball. Rip foul down the left field line. If you're the Eagles, you like the idea, you just wish that would have been belted fair.
Stokes, the first batter of the inning, and that pitch misses. Low evens a count of two. Big pitch there and an off speed and a swing and a miss for strike one. And if you're Green County Tech, you're getting a little nervous. You're down to your last two outs. The good news, all you need is one to keep this game alive. Bree Sage steps in. She's a 379 hitter. She does have some speed. She'll wait from wait for her first pitch from Houston. Pitch inside and she just taps it right back to Houston for out number two. Not what she needed if you're Green County Tech and they're down to their last out and I can feel that uh, these Benton faithful are gonna get on their feet. Cheer their team to victory. Ava Carter 0 for 2 will step in. She's a sophomore and She's got a big task ahead of her. She's a 546 hitter, two home runs, 33 RBIs, and if you like to be called on to help your team, I can't think of a bigger time than this. The pressure's on Ava Carter to keep this game alive. A big swing and a miss on a great pitch outside. Panthers are two strikes away from victory. Seventy three pitches now for Houston. Ten strikeouts. Three and two thirds innings. The 0 1. Another big swing and a miss. That pitch up in the zone. And Green County Tech's down to their last out as Ava Carter will step out, and take a breather. And the fans now rise to their feet here in Benton. Houston waits on the call from Redmond. Student section, number one in the air, the 0-2 missing outside. Pretty good group of students here to our left. Came back for part two on this game. It's the last chance for Green County Tech. They're down three to two, and that pitch is hit to the third baseman, Bethard. She throws on the first, and the Benton Panthers are state champions. Two undefeated seasons in a row, two state titles. And they go back to back. Coach Heidi Cox has done something that if you play any sport, you realize how hard it is, and that's to have two perfect seasons in a row. You just cannot have a bad day. I mean, you show up every day and you play like they did. In this game, they struggled starting off. They were down two to nothing in the third, got a run in the fourth, and then came back today and scored two in the bottom of the fifth. And they beat a Green County Tech team three to two. What a performance today by Alyssa Houston, who did not get the start, came in. and gets the win. We'll see the trophy presentations here momentarily, but a sad ending for Green County Tech is this is their first appearance in a state title game and they are all gathered together. And you can't say enough about how hard it is though to get here. When you look at how many teams are in each classification, you're able to beat everybody out. And then yesterday, you take a 2 nothing lead and kept fighting today. You held Benton to three runs, which is uh, not an easy task. Let's go through some stats here. Benton's offensive leaders, Redmond was two for three with an RBI, Bethard's two for three. 
with a, du a double and an RBI. Samples went two for four and Houston went two for two. The two pitches, the two pitchers rather for Benton was Scott. She pitched three innings, gave up three hits, two runs, two of them were earned. A walk and had four strikeouts, and then Alyssa Houston came in, and boy, was she good. Four innings pitch, three walks, 10 strikeouts, faced 12 batters, pitched it 77 times. Houston gets the win, Burrow gets the loss, as we see Green County take get the runner-up trophy, and nothing to hang their head about here. What a great Green County Tech team who came in and tried to do what nobody's done in two years, and that's knock off Benton. Your coach Reynolds, you've got to be proud of your team. And looks like four. We see them take their picture. Green County Tech had one, two, started two seniors, and so like to think their chances of getting back here and playing in the title game are good. Carly Burrow, really good pitcher. She's only a junior. She'll be back. And there's the trophy to the state title. Benton Panthers, the 5A state champions. You've got to think a sigh of relief for Coach Heidi Cox as we've talked about it. We'll talk about it again, how hard it is to not lose a game in two years. And, and so you have the nerves yesterday going into the game. And then what do you get to do? You get to go home and sleep on it again and come back here today. And so I know She's relieved to get the victory. Great team effort by Benton as they lead it, and they win it three to two. Once again, Houston, 14 and 0 on the year. She gets the win. Burrow ends it at 19 and three. Benton goes 32 and 0 on the year, while Green County Tech ends their season at 27, five and one. And Alyssa Houston is our MVP. And we read her stat line a little bit ago, but my goodness, four innings pitched, three walks, 10 strikeouts. Green County Tech really didn't have an answer for her. When, when Coach Cox brought her in, it was lights out, and she delivered Benton with their second st state title in two years. Back-to-back -back champions for Benton. Look at the box score. Green County Tech scored two runs in the third inning. Benton came back and made up one run, and then we took a break and went home for the night. The rain passed by, and we came back today where the bottom half of the fifth inning, Benton scored two big runs, and that was the ball game. Ten hits, two errors for Benton on the game. Green County Tech, three hits, one error. Final score, Benton three, Green County Tech Benton goes back to back and two undefeated seasons in a row. Beautiful facilities here at Benton. We thank the Benton School District and the community here for hosting baseball, softball, and soccer all at the same time. If you've ever been to an event, you know how much work goes into that. We thank their school district for all their work. Beautiful facilities if you ever get a chance to make it down here. Once again, Benton wins their second state title in a row by knocking off Green County Tech three to two. For Eric King, Bobby Swafford, I'm Derek Walter saying so long from Benton.